Hi, welcome to the Yaiheke Original Indian Museum here at Lake Paris. My name is Phil and I'm one of the park interpreters here. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about the, the native plants that grow here in the park and uh, some of their uh, uses. But before we get started on that, you might be wondering why it is that I'm here when we're supposed to be sheltering in place. Well, here at Lake Paris we're uh, trying to bring state parks to you so that uh, you can uh, enjoy what our parks have to offer uh, from the safety and comfort of your home uh, during these stressful times. And uh, on that note, uh, I want to make sure to uh, remind you that it's important to wash your hands uh, frequently throughout the day and to uh, cover your mouth and your nose when you uh, sneeze or cough and uh, to avoid touching your eyes with uh, eyes and nose with unwashed hands. And also that's important to uh, practice social distancing and to uh, keep at least six feet away from uh, anyone around you. So on that note, we can uh, go into our program now. So uh, you may or may not know this, but Lake Paris was uh, once home to the Native Americans who uh, still live here in this uh, region. And uh, primarily it was the Luceno and the Cahuilla that uh, called this region home and still do. And we're going to go over uh, some of the native plants that we have in this area that were used by uh, the Native Americans in their daily lives as uh, sources of food, medicine, and raw materials for making products. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started. This is our native plant garden here at the museum. In the garden we have a number of native species from the region. Many of these plants can be found right here in the park. We're going to be taking a close look at a few of these plants and talking about their uses. When visiting the park, it is very important that you don't uh, pick any of these plants. Uh, all the plants in our park are important natural resources and we need to protect them so that everybody can have a chance to see and enjoy them. So you may be familiar with sage as a cooking ingredient. Sage plants are part of the mint family and uh, you can usually tell by uh, the square stem that are on the leaves. Um, here at Lake Paris we have uh, two native species of sage and uh, this one is called white sage. And uh, just like we use sage for cooking uh, today. So the Native Americans and uh, they would also uh, grind the seeds to uh, make an oatmeal like mush to eat. This one is called black sage and again it does have the square stem on it. And uh, sage was also useful as a medicine for treating cold symptoms. It could be brewed as a tea to uh, help relieve a sore throat or cough. Uh, Kind of like how many people drink mint teas today for the same reason. This is the California sagebrush. It's not a true sage, but its uses are pretty similar. And it's been used as a medicine to treat cold symptoms as well. But it was also used as a pain reliever by applying it to wounds. And uh, you could also brew it as a tea to help with uh, labor pains. So it's definitely a useful plant to have around. This plant is known as the California buckwheat, and it can be found all over the park. This plant has uh, long been used for its seeds, which are an excellent source of food. They can be cooked into a porridge, kind of like oatmeal, or uh, used in making uh, baked goods like bread or cakes. Uh, today, uh, buckwheat pancakes are a popular use for the seeds. This is the brittle bush plant, which is actually part of the sunflower family. Uh, you can see that they're in uh, bloom right now and have little yellow flowers on them. Uh, brittle bush was used by the Cahuilla people for treating toothaches, as well as chest pain, by heating the plant and applying it to the chest. Uh, without modern medicines uh, that we have today, uh, the Native Americans had to be really creative with what was available to them to uh, help relieve their ailments. So this tree is a coast live oak, 
which is uh, one of the native oak, oak species in uh, California. Uh, these trees can actually live a really long time and uh, they produce acorns every year. Acorns uh, ripen during the fall and winter months and uh, they were collected by the local Native Americans and uh, used as a staple food. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about acorns right now. So here's some acorns. And as I mentioned before, acorns are a staple food for the Native Americans and are still prepared and eaten today. Acorns have uh, tannins in them, which are uh, poisonous compounds that make uh, acorns taste bitter and can also make you sick if you eat them. So uh, how do you make acorns safe to eat? Uh, well, they need to be processed first. And the first step is to grind them using this tool, which is called a mortar and pestle. And uh, it's an ancient food processor that is um, actually really good at what it does. So uh, after drying the acorns, the first step is to actually remove the shell to uh, get at the nut that's inside. And I'll show you guys how that's done. So once you uh, crack the shell open, you can get the nut out which uh, kind of looks a little like an almond and then you can uh, discard the shell and uh, once the once the nut is exposed like that you can uh, go ahead and uh, start grinding it down into a uh, fine powder so uh, you do that by just uh, crushing it up and you grind it around And uh, after grinding, the acorn powder needs to be uh, leached by pouring water over it. The water uh, rinses the tannins from the acorn, uh, making them uh, safe to eat. And uh, once uh, processed like this, acorns are often prepared as a uh, porridge that the um, Lucinio people call uh, Wee Wish. And uh, it's still eaten today as a traditional food. Besides being important sources of food and medicine, some native plants made up uh, the raw materials needed to uh, make some of the tools that were necessary for everyday life. Plant materials were used in much the same way that we use materials like plastics and metals for making uh, the tools we use today. On display in the museum are a number of tools and clothing products that are made uh, using native plants. And I'm going to show you some of them. These first items are made uh, primarily from yucca fibers. Yucca leaves have uh, very strong fibers in them that can be harvested and used to make things like cordage or products like these. In this case, we have a uh, brush used for cleaning out mortars and matates after food prep. The bristles are made from yucca fibers and the cordage on the handle is made from agave, which is a uh, similar plant to the yucca. We also have these sandals. The soles are made from yucca fibers as well. As you can see, yucca fibers are uh, good for making woven pro products like these. The strings on the sandals are made of uh, dogbane cordage, which is taken from the bark of the dogbane plant. Below we have the yucca fiber skirt. This uh, would normally be worn by women, and uh, you can see that the fibers on it look a lot like the fibers on the sandals. Uh, the apron on the front of the skirt is made using uh, willow tree bark and um, all of the items in this case are uh, made and donated by Willie Pink who is one of our tribal consultants who um, has made and donated a lot of the things that are in our museum. This item is a toy made using acorn caps that are cut into rings. The rings are hung from the wooden handle using uh, dog bane cordage. The idea of this game is to uh, swing the rings up and catch as many as you can on the handle. 
my uh, best record right now is three rings and um, this was also made and donated to our museum by Willie Pink so here we have a cooking basket which is uh, tightly woven using native grass these are actually woven so tight that they can hold water but uh, how do you cook in a basket that's uh, made of grass without burning it well, you need to heat rocks in your uh, cooking fire and then using this tool, which is a hot rock pickup tool, uh, you uh, pick up a rock and stir it around inside the basket to heat your food. Uh, doing this repeatedly will effectively cook your food without burning your basket. Um, a lot of work and skill goes into making these baskets by uh, Native American basket weavers. And they're both uh, functional and works of art, as you can see by the intricate design on it. And, uh, in the hands of skilled and knowledgeable people, native plants can uh, be crafted into really cool and useful items for living in the Southern California environment. All right, so today we went over uh, some of the native plants that we have here in the park and uh, how they were used by the Native Americans for uh, products like food or medicine and we also went over some of the um, items that were made uh, using native plant materials that uh, were necessary for everyday life here in Southern California so uh, what I want you to take away from this is that the Native Americans were uh, and still are uh, stewards of their land and to them, uh, these plants were vital natural resources, and they, um, they took care of them to make sure that they were uh, available to future generations. And so I think that we as uh, modern people living here today can uh, really take a lesson from uh, the Native American ways and think of uh, ways to better and serve our own resources for future generations. So as I conclude this program, I want you to think about ways in your own life that you can uh, conserve resources, such as uh, shutting off the water when you're uh, brushing your teeth or uh, making sure to recycle um, trash that can be recycled. So uh, just think about that as, uh, as you go throughout your day. And uh, thank you for uh, watching my video, and I'll see you next time.